Today on Mr. J and Friend, it's actually Mr. J and Son, and we're going to talk about static site generators and in specific, Elevendy. We have today a special guest who is an 18 year old from Portland, Oregon. Hi, I'm Bryce. He is, uh, what's your title? Uh, my title right now is Associate Systems Engineer. <laughs> You, you, you do uh, systems rollouts to, to a Mac environment. Are there any PCs? There's some PCs there, too. A couple of PCs, but I don't really ever touch those yeah. anymore. Uh, you've done things like um, configure and propagate VPNs on cloud storage in both uh, Microsoft Azure and Google Cloud. A lot of, a lot of uh, mostly GCP, some Azure stuff. Um, but right now, it's it's mainly been just Mac administration, conf configuring rollouts of updates and um, software and things like that. Jamf. We're using Jamf to manage and uh, propagate all of that. You're aiming for, hopefully, some Jamf certification coming up, maybe? Hopefully soon. I'm trying to get my boss to start buying those uh, training sessions. But Shout out to Case Griffith, who's going to meet up with, with Bryce next week and talk shop about Jamf, as uh, his company is rolling out Jamf as well. So that's, that's a quick intro on Bryce. Bryce is my son, and he picked up coding and computers pretty early because I worked from home, and he would sit and watch. He would sit uh, and mimic what I was doing and quickly got really fast and really good at both learning and doing. And uh, he's got a couple tattoos. I do have a couple of tattoos. Am I supposed to show them? Well, and he also has a nose earring now. Nose earring? What else <laughs> a nosing <laughs> what else you got um let's see i just picked up these glasses recently that's true um some pretty awesome hair always um that yeah that's basically the only other body modifications that i've done to myself <laughs> we'll show the coffee one at least all right well i'm wearing long sleeve it's kind of difficult but yeah there it is still healing i like it that matching with my friend it's a pretty good time all right, so we're going to dive into static site generators. And I want to give just a little bit of backdrop here. Back in the day, in fact, um, it's still today, when someone wants to build their own website and quickly put some content up, sometimes the default is, oh, I've got to go do a WordPress blog or I've got to do a Drupal blog, some sort of CMS. And the sad part about that is, first of all, there's a lot of setup. You've got to have a database. You've got to have a, multiple things for that account. And then every time someone comes to a page on your website, the website has to call the backend service, which then calls the database, gets that data, renders it in the backend service, and delivers it to the client, the browser, uh, every time for content that usually doesn't change much at all. And then if it does change or if it's not going fast enough and you want to cache it, a lot of times people will spend tons of money on Akamai or something like it to do caching in between so that uh, it kind of interrupts that backend to database slowdown and just sends the cache content directly to the browser fast. And that's what static generators solve, static site generators. They just build all of that from the start so that all that's being sent to the browser is the generated site with no processing needed, no database needed. It's just there lightning fast to give to the browser. That makes yeah. sense? Yeah, and like what he mentioned before, when I first started picking up programming, it was watching him do all just that. I, he would create the CMS and the database and everything for that, and it would just it would all work as one system. And so that's how I learned. And I honestly had kind of taken a break of web development or from de web development since then, and I haven't even learned any of the new, like, these static site generators. Um, and so picking up, learning about 11D, which we're going to talk about, and learning about Gatsby, things like that, has been really cool to see what has actually changed in web development and just how fast it can be now. And you were recently thinking about making a quick site, mm -hmm. and you didn't really want to use WordPress.com or even Medium or something like that, but you also didn't know what... In fact, my friend uh, Brian, who's, who's on the show all the time, was thinking recently too, What what's a quick generator what's a quick way to publish a site without having to do a full cms but still being programmatic etc um and you were you almost went the route of a wordpress or something like that mm -hmm. recently i think i still have my gcp 
uh, compute engine set up for that because I was, I was working on getting that set up and I was like, there has to be an easier way to do this now. This is so long and, and stressful. And the cool thing is, so uh, a quick note about Eleventy and Gatsby, which we'll talk, we'll reference Gatsby a few times. Um, Eleventy is simpler than Gatsby in that it doesn't use React by default and it doesn't use GraphQL by default. It kind of uh, takes a little bit of an opinionated stance that it's going to pull from README files or something like that and be a little bit easier. Mm. I will probably end up with Gatsby because of the React and the GraphQL. I'll probably end up using Gatsby because I want to get more projects with React on my GitHub profile. That's just the reality of it. Even though it's more complex than it needs to be for my uses for most of small sites that I want to build, Gatsby uh, provides that next level of learning and um, coolness factor and resume building, etc. Just to be completely honest. But with Eleventy, it provides, um, bo and both of them provide the ability to pull content from WordPress or Drupal or Medium, etc. while it's generating the static site. So you still get the benefits of using something like that as a headless CMS if you want to. And yet the speed, because it's built before the user requests it. So it's, it's kind of perfect both world scenario. And uh, I, I, I see it taking off tremendously, especially for Gatsby. And I think other ones like Eleventy are going to be really popular as well. I'm definitely very excited to see this. I love uh, Eleventy runs on um, a couple of different templating platforms, but uh, we're going to be using Markdown in this tutorial. I'm yeah. just kind of like showing how it works. And I, I personally love Markdown. I write documentation all the time for my job and I use Markdown constantly. Um, so seeing it be used in this way where we can actually build static sites is just so cool to watch. Yeah, and you, you might be familiar with Markdown in GitHub quite a bit. So people will write documentation in Markdown, like every readme is a Markdown file. And you'll see when it gets rendered on the homepage of your repo that it turns into HTML. And that's what we're going to be doing today. We, you write it in, in uh, Markdown, it gets converted to HTML for easy viewing. And that's the beauty. And then we'll style from there down the road. It's going to look a little bit crappy today, to be honest. Uh, Bryce, do you want to show in the terminal, uh, just delete the site folder? And then we'll run Eleventy in the terminal, and we'll see how it's run. If I'm not mistaken, Eleventy is a Node engine, so it's going to process everything and just export from there. <clears throat> Make sure I can spell it right. So yeah, like we just said, we just deleted that generated folder, and as soon as I run Eleventy, based on everything else that we have in here, all the source files, etc., we have our new index.html file, we have our episodes, um, and then based on how this one is named in this episode folder. It's just going to throw an index.html so that when we actually type in that URL later, when it's deployed in somewhere, we can just do slash one at the end of the domain name. So show the original index.md. Yeah, this is this is it. There's just this one. It's going to be rendered as an h1 probably, um, and then we're specifying our layout, which is uh, where's that? It would be in our includes. I'm not really sure why I chose Nunjux as the templating engine. Mm -hmm. I might I might switch that in. But go ahead and click on that. It's just right now it's the dead simplest HTML document you could get. And then show the episodes 1MD. Uh, if you're familiar with that top part, it's called something like front matter. I think that's what it's called. And you'll see that on dev.2 if you post an article there. It's that type of format where you can specify some simple properties that will get injected later on or used later later on. And this syntax is something I'm still not quite familiar with, but it looks like it's just basically a module. You're importing the YouTube module and then having the short code be spit into it. Exactly. So that whole thing is a short code. You would call the name of that short code is YouTube. And the, there's an argument that we're okay. passing in, which is the YouTube ID. So if you open up 11d.js, you'll see that right now that's just a configuration of 11d where we can add that short code. And... There's a bunch of syntaxes for that where you can add a, a Nunjack shortcode or a handlebar shortcode, etc. This is the universal one, which will you will be able to be used in any of those templating languages. And then this is where you're setting up that argument, right? Yeah, I see. So we're just embedding that ID of a YouTube. Cool. And I used uh, embedresponsibly.com for that little bit of markup right there. However, the problem is, um, let's do if you do 11d serve. Uh, so we're going to do an 11d serve. And I'm bad at typing, but it's dash dash serve is how you 
how you call that. And it's using browser sync. So if you want to use the browser sync UI, you can go to this one. But if you want to view the the website, I didn't, I came up think. over here. <laughs> Just do this. 80, 80. So there's our site. And um, go to one slash one. Uh, slash episode slash one. My bad. I forgot. No, that was my bad. Okay, so that's the first hurdle. We've got to figure out how to make sure that that's not being uh, encoded as far as the HTML goes. And I can't figure it out so far. So we're going to read up on some documentation real quick, try to solve that. And then our next goal is to make a similar short code for StackBlitz, because I really want to get StackBlitz um, editors in my posts. As you can see, what I'm, what I'm starting to build here is a website for all of the episodes of Mr. J and Friends. And we're going to want the YouTube videos in there. We're going to want some, some coding and links. It's going to be pretty simple overall, maybe some show notes. But the YouTube is key. We've got to, we've got to figure that out. And then we've got to figure out how to put in StackBlitz as a code editor in line. So we'll fast forward this part. Here we go. <laughs> So we just spent, you know, 45 minutes or so or more trying to figure out how to make YouTube videos that were consumed in the uh, via a shortcode in the Markdown, which is transitioned to HTML via this templating engine, to not be encoded. What it wanted to do, what it was trying to do, was show the code that we had put in the, the Markdown file as code instead of working HTML. So it's throwing it inside of a free tag and then a code tag and it was formatting it as if it was... Exactly, which, which is fantastic if you want to do syntax highlighting and show code on your site. But if you're trying to put actual code that works as HTML, not so great. We did find, however, a really good example. I should say Bryce found. Uh, this guy, Alex Carpenter, has a great repo on the 11D site that you can download. Shout out to this guy, go check out his website. <laughs> he's also, yeah, no kidding. Uh, he's our sponsor today as well. No, we're sponsoring him. We are giving a huge shout out uh, to what's his face. AlexCarpenter.me yes. is his website. Uh, and he's got a really nice setup too for his configuration. Really clean, shows how um, he's doing a bunch of stuff. And he has a really, a, a quite similar short code to what I built that does work responsibly in a slightly different way. Um, but in his configuration, he's doing some things that <laughs> we tried to copy over to ours and it just wasn't working. So uh, without spending much more time of going through each of his items and figuring out which one was making it work, we cloned his repo and started it up. And sure enough, he's got that YouTube shortcut in both HTML files or uh, Nunchucks files and Markdown files that are being converted. And it's a great repo for that. So it's positive. Um, I'll probably just, if I went forward with 11 i I'd probably start with more of his configuration and move from there. And if you were going to start with one, I would like to do the same. And also one thing to note too is he's using ES6 syntax, which we weren't necessarily doing. He's using a lot of uh, error functions and things like that that we are not using. So yeah. yeah, he's got his configuration uh, nicely abstracted to be super clean. What do you think, Bryce? About what? Well, I mean, <laughs> granted, we took 45 minutes, but but once you had this set, you could then you could then be almost free. Uh, obviously, you got to do some styling above that, and and if you ever have any additional functionality, you would build that in. But as far as content creation, from here on out, you're just off to the races. Uh, Bryce, let's show what it looks like to deploy. And we'll end with that. Does that sound right? Sure. Let me go back to our site. You'll notice that in mine, I've got, um, I've, I've pushed this up to my repo. It's actually a private repo. We're going to go over to 11.com. Sorry, not 11. Netlify, which uh, shout out to them as well. They're not our sponsor. But we're giving them a huge shout out today because they make it so easy. Yeah, get back. <laughs> to set up a pipeline so that as soon as you push something to GitHub, it 
it deploys. Check this out. I'm going to do a new site from GitHub. I'm going to look in GitHub. Also, it's free, which is cool. I'm going to choose MrJ.app, my private repo. I'm going to say, use the master branch. I uh, don't need any build command at the moment because I've, I'm pre-building it in the site directory. I probably will add that later. I'll put in um, some advanced things. I can't remember if I needed the publish directory or not. I think I do. One caveat to this is that you have to be throwing your public folder or your, uh, your generated site into GitHub, which isn't necessarily always the best practice. Well, you don't have to. That's just what I'm doing. There was a build step. For, so. Yeah, sorry, for this for this method. For yeah, you. Netlify would be able to run that quick build, build step. A little bit crooked, isn't it? It's unfortunate. If we just tilt our heads in. Uh, so it's probably already done. We'll go back to overview. Your site is deployed. Uh, this is our, our temporary domain. We'll get a, a new one. Hey, check it out. It worked. So let's do let's do that from the start. Let's go. So here's the one production deploy after we set that up. Yeah, that was like a minute yeah. from start. Let's make a change. Alright, we're pushing that up. It's going to see that. We'll see it show up right here, I think, in real time without having to refresh. Wait for it! Alright, I'm going to refresh. <laughs> there, here it is. No deploy message. Uh, no, it's already, it's already published. So it's dang fast. And where did I make that change? I mean, that in episodes. So if I go to... I don't see it there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you know why? Because <laughs> I made the change to the markdown file and I didn't do it. And that is a, a big mess. You would want that build step, which you could put into Netlify to pull from GitHub, build into the original score site, and then... That's our show for today. Um, I am definitely going to do Gatsby next. In fact, the class that I'm teaching, the two TAs and I are going to do a project along with the students, and we're going to use Gatsby for that, probably, if we're not all too busy to do it. And I'll probably share how that turns out in the future. Bryce, thanks for joining me. Yeah, this was fun. Thanks, thanks for having me on. Thanks for coming to, the, to here for the weekend for my birthday. Bye. <laughs> See you later.